It's the dawn of a new era at Tartan High School. For the first time, you are looking at live pictures of the brand new gymnasium that will grace Tartan boys and girls basketball for decades to come, live on SEC. It's girls basketball tonight with the Tartan Titans and Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. I'm Mike Beaton. Glad you could join us here in Oakdale. Our first visit to this spiffy brand new facility. And we'll talk more about the matchups and who to look for in a moment. Now let's go to the floor for the Star Spangled Banner. Just heard the sounds of the Tartan Pep Band with the Star Spangled Banner, and the playing surface is not the only new thing in this matchup. Both teams with first year head coaches, but both bring plenty of experience in this sport. Tartan, it's the first year with Angel Robinson at the helm. Angel had a sensational prep career. Miss Basketball Minnesota 2007, Class 4A state tournament champion that year and was the headliner of the St. Paul Central Super Teams. There she is. Played alongside the likes of Kiara Buford, Georgie Jones, Thierra Taylor. Her father, John, a head coach for a long time in both girls and boys basketball, including Cobalt Park, a few other places, St. Paul Central. Uh, she has hung around this board. I talked to Angel before the game. She said, this kind of fell into her lap and having the background that she has and her family has in this sport, perhaps it was only natural that she would make her way to coaching. And Angel, Angelique is her given name. She goes by Angel. Spent 10 years playing professionally overseas after a four-year career at Marquette. And that is Tara Seifer, her first year at Creek Durham Hall, but no stranger to Minnesota girls basketball. She was the head coach at Chaska for over 15 years, won a state championship in 2021 with the likes of Mallory Heyer, Kennedy Sanders, both playing Division I. Mallory, of course, part of that 8-1 Minnesota team that is making waves this year in women's basketball. This job was not on her radar when she stepped down from Chaska, but Tara wanted to get involved more with administration, and she has a chance to do that at Creighton Durham Hall as an assistant AD and head coach for girls basketball. The starters have been introduced. Let's recap them for you for Creighton Durham Hall. Uh, there's the player to watch for Tartan, Mia Hernandez. So we'll start with Tartan. Mia Hernandez is starting alongside Aliana Padilla, Molly Murphy, Anya Murphy and Annabelle Ingu. And there's a look at her numbers from last year. Stats from this year haven't been uploaded yet, but it's been an uphill battle for Tartan. Their first two games, 
scoring has been difficult to find. And for Creighton Durham Hall, that is the leading score among active players tonight. Lauren Bankson, Soraya Hodges, and Lily Haas both got banged up in Creighton Durham Hall's overtime win over Stillwater. Hodges suffered a concussion, so it could be a while before she's cleared to play. And Lily Haas also took some contact and Creighton Durham Hall having a game tomorrow. Tara Seifert said, let's try to save her if we can. It was a gritty win though, and perhaps one that signals some brighter times for Creighton Durham Hall. They've had some solid players over the last few years, but not the records to show for it as we're underway and we begin with the Mia Hernandez, Elbow J. Sage Gilbert on the take, too strong. Rebound collected by Padilla. Another change for Tartan. In addition to the coaching change, their top player from last year, Vienna Murray, transferred to Eastridge. So for Angel Robinson, it's all about building her way up. And sometimes that process is a gradual one, an arduous journey. Eight on the shot clock for Hernandez. Looking for a seam, doesn't find it. Tartan does get a shot off though. It bounces off the back iron right back to Hernandez who pulls up and drains it. Hernandez giving Tartan a four nothing lead to start this one. And that is an encouraging sign. Tartan managed a total of eight points in their game against Stillwater, just 23 against Coon Rapids. Green Durham Hall. On the entry play, that's Emma Dornan. Creighton Durham Hall, they haven't had a superstar athlete over the last several years, but they have a lot of multi-sport athletes. A couple of players on this roster, part of the soccer program. I believe Dornan a multi-sport athlete as well. And these kids at CDH heavily involved. Tartan trying to maneuver inside, can't quite do it. They'll get a second try. And the high arcing bunny goes in for Molly Murphy. It's 6-2, Tartan over Creighton Durham Hall. This is Bankson with a handoff to Sage Gilbert. Long two, got it. It's the kind of shot that can irritate some coaches when you're right at the line, but Points on a possession is better than having points away from a possession, or not having points on a possession. We've got a foul. Anya Murphy was pushed from behind. 15.50 to go. Tartan foul, number 42, In Anya the first Murphy. half, I stand corrected. It was Anya Murphy. I thought Anya got pushed. It was an offensive foul. Based on the body language, I thought otherwise, but that's why the officials are down there. So it's Creighton Durham Hall ball following the turnover. A three from the key. Sage Gilbert cannot connect as it drifts to the right ever so slightly. Hernandez with the rebound. She and Murray were a couple of solid pieces on last year's team. Hernandez fouled. She'll shoot two. Again, no data available yet this season for Tartan. Foul call, number 12 of the Raiders, Sage Gilbert. But over the last few years, as we take a look Mia at Hernandez. the play that led to this free throw trip for Hernandez. Doesn't get the front end to fall. Up to two, so the Raiders is number The biggest four, challenge for Tartan Laguna. has been consistency, Hernandez. building their way up. They have fielded some incredible athletes over the last few years, Azaria Chevre. Nevea Meister, Kendra Karake. But retaining them has been tricky. And trying to establish that culture, it, it takes some doing. Gilbert with the bounce pass to Bankson. Green Durham Hall benefiting from bringing back just about everybody. The starters for Creighton Durham Hall, by the way, didn't get a chance to mention them. Tank Edwards, Sage Gilbert, Melina Kronchnobel, Lauren Bainson, and Emma Dornan. Campbell out there 
for Creighton Durham Hall as we speak. CDH brought back just about everybody. We've got another offensive foul. This one on Hernandez for the elbow. Can't lead with that elbow. Tartan leads 7-4. But for Creighton Durham Hall, all but one player from last year's team came back. And the Raiders, again, picking up a win over Stillwater. Baseline drive. Gilbert can't connect. Loose ball scooped up by Tartan. Here come the Titans. Annabelle Ingu on the take. Basket number 55, Annabelle Engay. Engay, I should say. It's 9-4, and Tartan holding their own in the opening minutes. Based on the information we had, it looked like this could be a rough one. Campbell fires the three, but Tartan displaying their grid in the early going. Sometimes it's the little things that add up later on, whatever happens. And the final score here is Tank Edwards is fouled by Molly Murphy. Tank, the sophomore. Tanasha is her given name, but because of how tricky it is to pronounce, she goes by Tank. And Tank, the niece of Brianna Edwards, the current head coach of Minneapolis North. They have a game tonight playing against North St. Paul. It's Tartan Ball. Coincidentally, Brianna Edwards hosted a podcast for a time, and one of her guests was Angel Robinson. The two have a strong history together. It's a small community, this thing called basketball, but Tartan's lead is enlarging. Enge scores again, and Tartan is up 11-4. Here comes a three for Creighton Durham Hall, and it bounces off the rim. A chance for Tartan to elongate this advantage. Creighton Durham Hall can't get there in time. Good try by Kronschnabel, but it ricochets off of the Timeout. track. Timeout, and Tartan is leading 11 to four. Admittedly, not the start I think most of us were expecting. But that's why we play the games, right? Some more connections, more history that highlights the interconnectivity of this sport. One of Creighton Durham Hall's assistant coaches, Brittany McSparren, she graduated from Eastview, played her college ball at Drake, and is making her first visit to the coaching reins. She's on the far right side of the screen. Tara Seifert, a Division I graduate herself, she played her college ball at Iowa State who had a close battle with Iowa last night, where Caitlin Clark passed 3,000 career points. There's a chance she could make a run at Kelsey Plum's all-time Division I record. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our timeout history lesson on SEC Sports. 11-4, 13-43 left. And Tartan with a chance to build their lead here. Hernandez can't hit the 14-footer, but getting the O-board and the putback is Anya Murphy. That's and this Tartan team, I'm wondering what happened between the first couple of games and what we're seeing here. Maybe not all the personnel were available, or maybe some other factors were at play, but Green Durham Hall, they're getting their money's worth here. Anira Gorman, Anira Gorman, I should say, gets on the board as she enters in the first time. And remember, Creighton Durham Hall is without two of their top Checking players. In for Creighton Durham Hall, number 21, Joey Hooper. They won't be out for terribly long, but it certainly doesn't help when you're just starting out. Creighton Durham Hall splitting the first two games, losing a close one to Roosevelt and beating Stillwater in overtime. They get four slate tomorrow. This is Hernandez off the screen. Had an opening for a minute on the mid-range, Jay, but they'll try another set. And Engay bounces it into a wall, jump ball. 
And the possession Jump hero favors Kinder Hall. So they will take over. Tara Seifert at Chaska, 301 wins. Here is Gorman. Her jumper offline. Tank Edwards can't get to the rebound in time, so Tartan will take over. Hernandez. High dribble. And she kept it alive. Tough pass, though. And Bankson had an opening. A foul was called. And now we're going to have a discussion between the two officials. A foul was called on Creighton Durham Hall. Foul was called, Tartans number 35. No, on Tartan. Molly Murphy. Substitution into the Titans is number 23, Kaylee Chapman. Still getting my direction sorted out here with 12-16 left. So it was a foul on Tartan, but a costly one of sorts for Creighton Durham Hall because Bankson had an uncontested path to the rim and that not taken place. So it said Creighton Durham Hall has to go for a side out. Pass deflected. So CDH can retrieve. This is Bankson. The handoff to Campbell. Now Tank Edwards. Another foul on Tartan. And the fouls are piling up here. Foul call, Tartan's number 42, on the former conference or former section rivals. Creed Durham Hall moving down to class 3A this year, and Tara Seifert is hoping to bring CDH back to a 4A level in due time. Earliest would be two years from now when they go through the next reclassification cycle, but moving down to 3A, move, put Creed Durham Hall in contention to get to state. They were placed in section 3-3A, and that group doesn't have a standout contender, at least not in preseason. A lot of folks thought that could be the opening to get Creighton Durham Hall back into state, something they last did in 2018, reaching the big dance in 4A. Gilbert comes up with the pick, rejected by Hernandez. Campbell pulls up, looks strong, and Tartan. Did they get the ball or not? A late whistle. So it will be CDH on the dead ball offensive rebound. The call came a little late, but Tartan on the baseline. Catch and shoot. Ingram Hall struggling to put the ball in that hole. They go down low, and Tartan getting a little too grabby there. Looks like Padilla will be tagged. Fouls on Tartan, and that will be the case. Ayana Padilla, hit with a foul. Hover at the line. Puts in the front end. Joey Hover. And Creed Durham Hall picks up their first points in some time. It's 13 to 8. Those are also the first points this season for Hover. A 
again, Hodges and Haas are the two big names. Here's Enge. Used up the dribble. Looking for help, finds it. Pass picked off up top by Gilbert. And she'll go to the line for two after she was hacked by Kaylee Chapman, number 23. Fouls on number 23 of the Titans, Kaylee Chapman. Shooting two for the Raiders, number 12, Sage Gilbert. Timeout on the floor. Angel Robinson sensing a potential turn of events here. We'll use a timeout. 10.34 left timeout, in the first half. Decking in for Greek Darren Hall, number 30, Emma Dornan. With this timeout, if you weren't with us on Tuesday, we'll take a look at last year's Metro East standings. It's still early in the new season, so not a whole lot has developed yet. But it was Matamidai who ran the table. We saw them against Providence Academy. They still have some pieces to contend. Hastings, not too shabby. Hill Murray going through a retooling of sorts. North St. Paul, new coaching staff. You see Tart had a rough go of it, 11 and 15. It was mostly Vienna Murray, Two Rivers and Simley were trailing the field, although Two Rivers already one win away from matching last year's win total after they beat Highland Park. They get Bloomington Jefferson tomorrow. North St. Paul playing Minneapolis North as we speak, and Hillbury off to a rocky start of sorts as they factor in their new member in Maya Wilson. So a lot of questions and a lot to uncover regarding the Metro East and how it will all shake out. But I think the biggest surprise in the early going is Two Rivers. And yes, the teams they've defeated aren't going to jump out at you, but being 4-0 is a heck of a lot better than 5-22. I think anyone would agree with that. So now we go to the free throw line where Sage Gilbert awaits her turn. 5'6 sophomore. Averaging seven points per game. Has three adopted siblings in her family. And also plays softball, as we noted before, a lot of multi-sport athletes at Creighton Durham Hall in St. Paul. Tartan out of fouls to give as well, so Creighton Durham Hall will be in the bonus. And 10-18 is a long time for that. Ooh, Tartan got awfully close to a backboard violation. Stripping the ball is Gorman. She takes off running and finishes in transition. Creighton Durham Hall trims the deficit to one, 13-12. Gay with the handoff to Hernandez. Hard by Gorman. Tartan ends up throwing it away. Looked a little more rattled over the last few minutes. Jordan doubled, kicks back out, plenty of time. Jordan gets another touch after Creighton Durham Hall swings out. Her turnaround shot is long. Hernandez. To Enge. Lost the dribble, and that has been hampering Tartan over the last few possessions, these unforced errors. They're turning the ball over without any kind of real pressure. Yeah. 
This is Gorman. Gilbert, 15 to shoot. Gorman with the long skip. Banks in left alone. Her three is short. Rebound, pinballs around. And that will go to Tartan following the traveling call on Sage Gilbert. Dragged her feet a bit as she collected the rebound. Not a kind of play, not the type of play you would falter for when you're down on the ground like that. It can get a little chaotic, as any athlete past or present can tell you. Hitting the 15-footer, N.K. And the freshman giving Tartan a fountain of offense in the early going. Creighton Durham Hall says right back at you with the three. Aguda scoring. Another offensive foul on Tartan. I don't recall seeing so many offensive fouls foul is on in Tartan one half. 55, Annabelle Nge. It's on Checking Nge. In for the Raiders is number 15, Elena Kronschnabel. Number four, Kyla Laguda. She'll pick up the dime Number on the Lauren three, Banks and Lauren triple. For three. Green Durham Hall with their first lead, 18-15. Hernandez, gotta watch out with that arm. Tartan has been tagged with a few offensive fouls. That one will go against Dornan a little too much contact with Anya Murphy. Creighton Durham Hall foul number 30, Emma Dornan. In for the Raiders, number 13, Stella Bauer. There's another look. Hernandez lets another one fly. A little strong, Creighton Durham Hall on the move. Stella Bauer. Got caught up in the midst of that. Bauer, the 5'7 senior. Creighton Durham Hall extending the lead. Kronschnabel on the board. Big run for Creighton Durham Hall, 14-2 by my count. This could be the moment that helps them surge ahead. Again, they're coming off that emotional win over Stillwater as Hernandez sees her three carry him off the back iron. Banks and recovers. Bauer, nowhere to go. Creighton Durham Hall swings it around. Gilbert surveying her options, feeds it to Dornan. Can't get the post up. Creighton Durham Hall had some trailers and a foul while in pursuit of the rebound. It appears it's on Tartan. Yes, and that means free throws. In for Green Darren Hall, number five, Jane Edwards. Unless that was ruled a team control foul. No, I do see the one and one signal. In the bonus. Substitution in for Tartan, number 22, Charlotte Preston. At the line, shooting one and one for the Raiders, number 12, Sage Gilbert. 
Charlotte Grezchik checks in for the Titans. It's one and one for Sage Gilbert. The boos you're hearing from the Tartan fans might be in relation to a bench warning. I believe that's what I heard from the official. Sage Gilbert comes up blank. Creighton Durham Hall was in the one and one range. That has not changed this year for high school basketball in the states that use halves. And Hernandez draws the foul on the slash. She'll go to line for two. A reminder. Among the changes that took place for states that use quarters, the NFHS got rid of the one and one. So anytime you're in the bonus, it's two free throws automatically, similar to the college game. But since Minnesota still uses halves, the one and one double bonus rule still applies. Hernandez sinks both. She's got seven. And Tartan picks up a couple of much needed points. Gilbert for three. Too strong. Jump ball possession. Tartan. Tartan with the arrow. Or is it Creighton Durham Hall that has the arrow? The announcer said Tartan. And the scores table is signaling Tartan. The scoreboard has Creighton Durham Hall with the arrow. We don't have the possession arrow light that some gyms have to help us there. It, it's on the scoreboard, but it had the arrow pointing in the wrong direction. Well, that's okay. I get confused all the time on misdirections. 5.46 to go in the first half. 2017, Creighton Durham Hall over Tartan. Again, Creighton Durham Hall without their top two players. They both suffered injuries in the game against Stillwater. Nothing severe, but it could be shorthanded for a little while. Tank Edwards on the take. That's her first field goal. Delay of game warning on Creighton Durham Hall. If you're not familiar, a team who scores cannot touch the ball after it goes in the basket. And I believe Tartan did call a timeout. timeout. Yes, 30 second timeout. So delay of game issued to Creighton Durham Hall. A second one would result in a bench technical not designated to a player. So that gives us Time to listen to the pep band again. 22-17. Tartan was up 13-6 in the early going. Green Durham Hall got on a 14-2 run, and they hold a five-point lead. Here's a look at the Class 3A rankings. As of yesterday, Green Durham Hall in the top 20, and again, perhaps a favorite to get out of Section 338. Como Park, you see them at 5-0. They might be a sleeper. Benilde St. Margaret shorthanded. Olivia Olson out with a broken metacarpal. She will hopefully return in January. De La Salle off to a strong start. They took down Alexandria last weekend at the girls' tip-off classic. Oh, Tartan. How do they get in bounds in time? Looked like they were going to jam themselves into another unforced error, but Enke got across just in time. Hernandez tries to score going across on the run. Those are tough shots to put in. Here comes Tank. Back to the line she goes. Tank Edwards, the sophomore. Well, no, she's a junior. Edwards shoots two. She puts down the front end. 
has played on the Minnesota Stars AAU program for a good number of years. Also does volleyball and track. Tank splits at the line. It's a one point lead for one point possession, I should say. Six point lead for Creighton Durham Hall. Durham Hall swings it around, three, rattles out. Tank Edwards comes up with it. Fresh 20 for Creighton Durham Hall. Slithering her way to the lane was Kronschnabel, and another foul, double bonus time for Creighton Durham Hall. Creighton Durham Hall foul number 15. No, it's on Creighton Durham Hall. On Crunch Novel. Tough to tell sometimes when you have so much traffic, but we have the benefit of replays. Let's see what happened here. Okay, I see what happened. Yes. This is why I'm up here and the officials are down there, but on the replay you can see it. It was tough to tell in live action. Well, Tartan turns it over regardless. Three off the back iron. But Kronschnabel grabbed the Tartan player by the arm, and that's what led to the foul. A little hot potato unfolding here, but Creighton Durham Hall gets another possession. Edwards initially bobbled the pass, gets it back, and it will be a turnover on Creighton Durham Hall. Gorman was not established in time. She stepped out of bounds, and Hatton re-entered the field of play. If you're wondering, you can step out of bounds and come back in to touch the ball. You just have to reestablish yourself in the field of play. Hernandez hounded again, draws another foul. Krieger Mahal had two to give. With 3.39 left in the first half. Krieger Mahal foul number 11 on Naira Gorman. Just the first on Gorman, and they're going to rule this a shooting foul? No, side out. It didn't look like there was a shooting motion when I watched the play. Ripping the ball out was Joey Hover. Flexing her strength there. Here comes Edwards. Gorman. Tartan takes the ball back. They've had some trouble finishing. And Joey Hover with another defensive hustle play, rising up for the block. Greenderham Hall swinging it around the fence. Cross court to Edwards. Three ball. Corner pocket. Tank Edwards goes up to six with that triple. Greenderham Hall swipes it again as they poke and swat at the ball handlers. Gorman thought about a three, fakes. Oh, yeah. Bankson will try. And Kareem's off the rim. Tartan in trouble. And they'll try to inbound it again. Subs in, Creighton Durham Hall, number 12, Sage Gilbert. Tartan. 2.17 to, to go, and Creighton Durham Hall up by nine. It's been a slow crawl of sorts. Not as much fluidity over the last few minutes. Tartan got off to that hot start, but they've struggled to find their form since. Entry pass intercepted, and there's what I call the double whammy. You turn the ball over and then you foul far away from your basket. 
Double bonus here for Creighton Durham Hall, so two free throws coming up. And it will be Dark Lauren foul, Bankson. Molly Murphy, shooting two for Creighton Durham Hall, number 20, Lauren Bankson. Bankson knocks down the front end. Stops in for the Raiders, 25, Danny Hoban. A three-sport athlete, soccer, golf, and basketball, also involved in a variety of clubs and organizations. When she's not playing sports, she enjoys hiking and tent camping. And she makes the most of her brief camp at the free throw line. She's got five points. Long two for Tartan. Does not drop, rebound. No put back, a little too much mustard there on the part of Padilla. Tartan will get another chance though on the dead ball rebound. Padilla. I'll try again. Catch and shoot for Engay, too strong. Now Tartan bringing some pressure. Green Durham Hall maneuvers past it. Follow up on that point of Bankson who participates. I'll have a chance to talk about it here because we'll have more free throws for number 25, Gabby Hoban. Tartan foul, number 23, Kaylee Chapman. It's not uncommon for Creighton Durham Hall students to have off days from schooling to do community service work. Back in the ball game for the Titans, number four, Mia Hernandez. Holban shoots one. Holban missing the front end. Creighton Durham Hall has slowly padded their lead since Tartan led 13 6. They have a chance to add three more. Bankson. Too strong. But another dead ball rebound for the Raiders of Creighton Durham Hall. It was 13 6. Since then, Creighton Durham Hall on a 22 4 run here. And that stretch is helping them hold off Tartan as they soldier forward. They get forced late tomorrow. That's another team that has gone through some retoolings. White Bear Lake, Roseville, a couple of other names to keep an eye on in conference. They will also host a holiday tournament. More of a round robin, but they'll get visitation and two rivers. We mentioned two rivers earlier. They're off to a strong start. And as always, they get an annual meeting with De La Salle, part of a rivalry series with the two. Double dribble on number 45, Peyton Love. Less than a minute to go. Gorman threads it. Another miss down low. Green Durham Hall getting a lot of penetration in the paint. Finishing has been another story. Hernandez to Engay for three. Off the back iron. Hernandez positions herself for the rebound. Eight second difference, shot clock to game clock. Ten to shoot. Engay. Mishandled the dribble, Hernandez for three. Can't get the bounce, Creighton Durham Hall with time. Banks it to Gorman. Baseline jumper, swish. Gabby Holman with a fine execution. While the clock was ticking down and Creighton Durham Hall leads 30 to 17. Ending the first half on a gargantuan 
24-4 run after trailing 13-6. We'll be back with first half stats and analysis. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on SCC. Green Durham Hall leads chart 30-17. I'm so glad you ladies are here. You each have your own rooms. Thank you. Get settled in. I'll call you for dinner. Adopting teen sisters, it's a lot. Girls, you're gonna be late. You want breakfast? No thanks, we're good. They're always in their own world. You get there? Twice the work. Twice the surprises. Just try it. <laughs> but if you think of it that way, they're also twice as fulfilling. I think you should ask her yourself. Is it OK to call you mom? Of course you can. Life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome. Pre-diabetes does. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. And you could be one of them. There are usually no signs for pre-diabetes. So it's important to understand your risk. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. And you can change the outcome. Take the one minute pre-diabetes risk test today. Go to doihaveprediabetes.org. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. Those nine months were also 273 days of planning. What about your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. And let's not forget those barbecues you plan in detail for your family and your more vegetarian by the day best friends surprise party for your parents' golden anniversary? You get the golden planning. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts, prepare an emergency kit, and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. As a scientist, I know by the time she takes her first breath, nine billion more tons of carbon pollution will be in the air. When she takes her first steps, wildfires will have burned millions more acres she could have explored. The day she gets her first pet, there are thousands of newly extinct species she'll never meet. The night she forgets to call, the night of her first heartbreak, her future home floods for the first of many times. By the time a child born today goes to college, it may be too late to leave them the world we promised. Our window to act on climate change is like watching them grow up. We blink and we miss it. We're breaking in this new gymnasium, at least for basketball. The volleyball team got to play here in the fall, all part of the renovations taking place throughout the athletic facilities here at Tartan High School in Oakdale. 30-17, our score, Creighton-Durham Hall leads Tartan. 
ending the first half on a 24 for advantage. Tartan got up 13 to six and they were looking pretty spry fluid. Looked like they were gonna give Creed Durham Hall a run and then things unraveled a bit as far as their poise. A few unforced errors led to a lot of opportunities. Creed Durham Hall did have some turbulence of their own, but they were able to slowly pad their advantage. And remember, their top two players not in the lineup tonight as they worked their way back from ailments they incurred against Stillwater as we take a look at the highlights. Engay and Hernandez were clicking early, as you see in view of Engay's plays. And that can be something for Tartan to build on. Again, they almost have to start from scratch again with Vienna Murray making the move to Eastridge. And Ira Gorman, one of a whole lot of players to score, all but one by my count, has scored for Creighton Durham Hall. There's Engay again, knocking down the pull up from 15. One of a few threes to drop for Creighton Durham Hall. That was the lone triple from Lauren Bankson, but a few of her teammates have chipped in. There's Tank Edwards. And the corner three that she hit, just a couple of field goals, but she leads with six points. It's a little unusual to see a breakdown like this. But here's a look at the first half stats. For Tartan, most of the scoring has come from two players. Everyone else still working to get involved. Green Durham Hall, I don't think I've ever seen offensive production this far spread out. But remember, they also are undergoing a renovation, a refit with Tara Seifert, who brings a lot of experience and pedigree from her decade and a half at Chaska, where she helped guide the team to a state championship and made them a perennial contender before making the move. Creighton Durham Hall has some multi-sport versatile athletes in their ranks, but no real star player that some of the top teams in 3A and 4A have. That being said, that win over Stillwater and their performance so far against Tart signals perhaps another rise to prominence for the school located in St. Paul. We'll be back for the second half. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on SEC. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, any real world experience. it's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water, to disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Email from school about the incident today. Scary. Tell me about it. Did you have any idea that was going on? None. I mean, you saw Derek at the game last night, too. Did you have a clue? No, but you know, teachers like me, parents, we don't always know as much as you guys do. Kids hear first about what's going on with other kids. Half the time, it's rumors. It can be hard to tell sometimes, but if you're ever concerned about a friend who's having trouble with alcohol, prescription drugs, bullying, violence, anything, you need to tell an adult. Mom or me, a teacher, coach, school counselor, someone you know and trust. Dad, no kid is gonna tell an adult about that kind of stuff. I get it, but if we don't know, we can't help. Speaking up about a problem, that's what helping a friend is all about. When it comes to health, we're all on our own journey. You may have aches, pains, fatigue, or even symptoms of long COVID that make everyday life difficult. For challenges like these, physical therapy is the solution. 
No matter where you are on your health journey, your physical therapist and physical therapist assistant can help. Visit ChoosePT.com to find a physical therapist near you or ask your primary care provider for a referral. This message is provided by the American Physical Therapy Association. vegetables, whatever your go-to is. We're glad you can cheese it up with us on SEC Sports at the new Tartan Indoor Gymnasium. Renovation's not complete yet, but everyone's excited for what the finished product will look like. White Bear Lake also going through some renovations. They will be completed next year, and everyone will be moving into some brand new digs. Always cool to see these sparkling New facilities open up. It's a little easier for us, too, on the setup. Creighton Durham Hall trying to set up another play down low, and they do. That's Emma Dornan. If you just joined us, all but one player that has entered the floor for Creighton Durham Hall has scored. They are without their top two scores tonight. Lily Haas, who got a bruise near her eye in the overtime win over Stillwater, and Saria Hodges, who is suffering from the effects of a concussion. And Sage Gilbert. Drops another transition pull-up. And Green Durham Hall on the accelerator to start this second half. It is now a 28-4 run since they trailed 13-6. Hernandez not there. Again, Green Durham Hall speeding their way down court. Sage Gilbert. A couple of buckets in the early going. This will be a 30-second timeout taken by And the cohesiveness that seemed to elude Creighton Durham Hall for most of the first half has found their way, found its way into their camp. They lead 36-17 as we get another look at Sage Gilbert. We highlighted some of the upcoming matchups for Creighton Durham Hall. The De La Salle one will be a big one. And they also get Minnehaha Academy to end the regular season. Minnehaha team to watch in 2A. For Tartan, they're in the Metro East. It's a conference that we're still trying to sort out. With two rivers on a fantastic start, Hill Murray. Maybe not playing to the potential we thought we might see from them, but they're always a contender toward the end of the season. So back to action as Tartan tries to find anything to kickstart a drive of their own, a run, and replicate the early success they had. Enge will go to the line for two. Some non-conference opponents for Tartan include their next game, their first conference ball won't be seen until January 3rd. And get at the line as we look at the foul that put her there. But the next match for Tartan is December 13th when they host St. Paul Central, the school that Angel graduated from and caught up with her pregame alongside Brittany McSparren, again, the two Highly familiar with each other as Enge splits. Angel said, I can't lose to that school. Even though she made all kinds of highlights, headlines, and memories in the midway part of the capital city. 36-18, here comes Hernandez on the take. Can't get the roll to drop. Green Durham Hall looking for the press breaker. And they break in a couple more points. That's Crotch Schnabel. One of the many multi-sport athletes. At CDH, 38-18 and Creighton Durham Hall 
assuming control. We've seen this sometimes from teams that are favored in matchups like this. I saw this unfold yesterday to an extent. With Benilde, St. Margaret's, and Cooper, it sometimes takes a half to find your footing. Hernandez in trouble. And she was guarded closely by Edwards. Deflects it off of Edwards to keep it on the Tartan side, but they only have eight to shoot. So we'll see what they draw up late in the shot clock. The lob, they were trying to go back door to Enge, and instead Edwards leaks out for the finish. Five, Edwards. Edwards, the junior, up to eight. Coming into this game at a total of six points. Another turnover. Gilbert. I think someone got a piece of it. Dornan taking number 35, Molly Murphy, for a little ring around the Rosie. But it will be Tartan Ball. 14.56 left. Zorian Singer checking in for Tartan. If I'm correct, the younger sister of Jean A. Singer, who played at Como Park. Took up both volleyball and basketball at Nyack, North Iowa Area Community College, as Jean A tries to find a place to play. The Singer family, with a large presence in athletics, the most notable uh, Tartan graduate, Dorian Singer, who is playing college football at Arizona the last time I checked. Gorman times the inbound pass and takes it all the way for two. That's Laguda. Laguda, my apologies. Laguda and Gorman on first glance, sometimes they blend in, but that is Laguda. And I'm sure Gorman didn't mind the shout out. 42-18. Here comes Tartan, still looking for their first field goal of the second half. Fouls on number 30 of Freedom Darren Ball, Emma Dornan. In for the Raiders, number 13. Emma Dornan, call for the foul. There's Singer on the inbound to Hernandez. The step back J, short. Three on zero. Those are That's strong odds. They announced the basket as Enge scores for Tartan. They said it was Bauer. From my count, it looked like it was Kronschnabel who scored the last one for Creighton Durham Hall. I thought I saw 15 in there. Both are out on the floor, Bauer and Kronschnabel, but I'm sure we'll get everything sorted out when the final box score is posted. Nice set for Creighton Durham Hall, but Dornan was too strong on the scoop. Hernandez has her pocket picked by Laguda, and she takes off one more time. Creighton Durham Hall literally outrunning Tartan here in this second half. It's 46-20. And the match Jump ball that we thought subs in. could occur Tartan is brewing here. Again, sometimes it takes teams a half to get Joey things Porter. sorted out. And you hear this a lot no matter the level, whether you have five wins or 20, whether you're a state tournament perennial or a team trying to build its way forward. A common refrain, can you survive a bad half? The teams that have the most success are able to do that. It looks like Creighton Durham Hall overcame their bad first half, and they're riding high right now. Anya Murphy's going to go to the line. Foul number 21 of the Raiders. She has one over. field goal. Part of that 13-6 start. Gets on the board there. And 
success measured in different metrics depending on who you play for, where you're at, the position you were in a year ago. Tartan with the steal after an unforced error on Gorman, but Creighton Durham Hall takes the ball back. Branch Novel with the bounce pass. Gorman, catch and shoot. Kareem's off the back iron. This is Branch Novel again. Another three. This time it's true. Laguda having herself a second half. She's up to 10. Drawing contact on the take is Enge. I believe this will send her to the line. But I'm looking at the numbers for Creighton Durham Hall. And we do have a few new season highs to report for Laguda and Edwards. Of course, not having Hodges and Haas in the lineup does alter the equation a bit, but it's still a milestone, even though it's early. It's the kind of performance that can inspire confidence later on in the season. Enge hits the front end, and I've got her at 10. She and Hernandez, the two players that have found the most success in this one. Enge makes both, 49-24. Green Durham Hall with that epic overtime winner against Stillwater. First time in five years that has occurred. Gorman inside. The turnaround drops in for Hover. Her first field goal. And regarding the two inactive players tonight, Haas, they plan to bring her back for the Forest Lake game. Tara Seifert just didn't feel a need to force the issue with the season as long as basketball. It runs about three months when you play the full 26. And that's not counting playoffs. Side out for the Titans of Tartan. 11.25 left in the second half. Looking for space. Couldn't find it. Now Singer's got the rock. Under duress again, and we're going for a ride. Singer will call for the foul on Gorman. Here's another look. Gorman's wondering what the heck is going on. There's Laguda with their first double-digit game of the season. It's just the third game of the year for both teams, so the season highs still getting sorted out here, but Laguda wants two more. 17-footer too high. Singer couldn't control it. More contact, and it looks like it will go against Checking in no one. Couldn't tell initially, Gorman and Singer, They've been in a couple of tussles as of late. Now they issue a foul. It was a foul on Singer. So Zorian picks up her second. The Creighton Durham Hall up comfortably here, 51-24. Dropping that proverbial hammer really since the 13-6 mark when they trailed. The side fake for Bankson sets up a three. Bounces off the rim. Rebound going to number 23, Gigi Sylvester. 
Green Durham Hall putting in just about everybody tonight. Stella Bauer to the line. Dart foul, number 23, Kaylee Chapman. Shooting two for the Raiders, number 13, Stella Bauer. Bauer looking for her first points of the season. And she does get the split. So she's on the board for the first time this year. You hear the phrase as we have a foul on Green Durham Hall. Joey Hover tagged for it. You hear the phrase, you never know what will happen from one year to the next. Last time these two teams met, it was the section quarterfinals when Creighton Durham Hall was in 4A. Enrollment has dropped a bit, so Creighton Durham Hall, excuse me, classing down to 3A. But the last time these two met, it was a tight one. Won by Creighton Durham Hall 60-53 in the opening round of sections. But since then, some wholesale changes involving both sides. Creighton Durham Hall brought back just about everyone, but they have a new coach. Tartan has a new coach as well, and that changes the dynamic. Look out. Well, the ball went right to the official, which will make for an easy inbound. That will go down as a turnover on Creighton Durham Hall. We spoke of the turbulence of sorts involving Tartan in terms of lack of consistency. It's not as if they haven't had fantastic players in their ranks. Quite a few have come out of Tartan as Creighton Durham Hall. Can't get the transition jumper. How about a second chance bucket? The jumper from 25, Colban is short. Dead ball rebound to Creighton Durham Hall, 9.28 to go in the second half. Back in the ball game for the Titans, number 35, Molly Murphy. And both sides do have some distinguished athletes, even if they're not the powerhouses at the big school level like Hopkins or Minnetonka, or even Chaska, where Tara Seifert coached for all those years. No ill will, she wanted to make that clear. As Aliana Alarcon Perdia is hit with a foul, her second. Tara fielded some questions. People were asking, did something happen at Chaska? She said, no, there, there, there's no bad blood. I don't have any regrets about my time there. Three on the way for Bankson. Raises the iron once more. But Creighton Durham Hall piling up offensive rebounds with impunity on this possession. Baseline J. Too strong. That hustle can be tough to contain, though, and that could benefit them later on this season. Tartan trying to score near the paint. They can't do it. Creighton Durham Hall. This is where they have thrived the most in the second yes, half. The fast break plays. Oban up to four with that score. Tartan trying to thread the needle inside. They're having all kinds of difficulty. Clean up near the paint. Tank Edwards collects the outlet, the Hezzy, and the finish. Number five, Tank Edwards. Edwards with her first double-digit game of the season. She and Laguda both have season highs, for those wondering. And I'm sure will be talked about at least for a night. Green Durham Hall, they're back at it tomorrow. Angel Robinson. For Durham Hall, number 11, a little displeased Durham. with the ball handling situation there on Molly Murphy. 
for someone in Angel's position with the team she has, I feel like there perhaps is a little more teaching involved. When I caught up with Angel and Brittany McSparren beforehand, they were reminiscing about the times they played against each other and some of their career developments since their days in high school and college ball. The Angel ball going to St. Paul Central, then played at Marquette. In then three, spent 10 years Lilla. on the overseas trail. McSparren went to Eastview, made it to state, played her college ball at Drake, and getting into coaching for the first time. But the mood was rather jovial. No one was too worried about, oh, how is my team going to look? Uh, what's going to happen tonight? Both have an understanding of the assignment in front of them and still have that optimism that comes with every new year, like that new car smell or Christmas morning when you find out all those gifts that have been stored in secrecy and the contents that lie within. Tartan ball, 7.25 to go. Green Durham Hall up 56-24. But Tartan, they've had a couple of studs in their ranks over the years. Jesse Stonsky graduated from here in 1998. Had a wonderful career at Wisconsin. Inducted into the Wisconsin Athletics Hall of Fame a couple years ago. Tia Elbert, one of the top scorers in the state, part of an ever-growing class of 3,000-point scores, and for a time, she was also part of an exclusive club of 1,000-point scores in a season. Titans, Membership has expanded Hernandez. significantly since. But Tia brought a lot of notoriety. Not the tallest figure out there, but one of the scrappiest, and that's why she scored so many points. Of course, they all took place at the old gym. Another turnover for Creighton Durham Hall. Catch and shoot. That jumper goes in and out. Holban won't add to her total here. And Tartan will call another timeout with 6.37 to go. In the second half, full timeout. We spoke of Tartan's next game. This is part of a significant home stretch, a five game home stretch to be precise. Here's a look at some upcoming matchups. St. Paul Central, Duluth East, Woodbury, Spring Lake Park. Those next three games, all winnable perhaps for Tartan. Spring Lake Park. And Sartell, that will be part of the Granite City Classic. That is a breakdown sponsored event held at multiple venues in the St. Cloud area. St. Cloud Tech, St. Cloud Apollo, St. John, St. Benedict. It's a busy time of the year, the holiday season. And then they'll start conference play January 3rd. We'll see how they fare in the Metro East. They also get Harding, Wilmer, Minneapolis Southwest in their non-conference slate. For Tartan, I feel the emphasis this year, and I'm not in the trenches and the huddles, but I feel the objective is gonna be planting the seeds that can help build their way forward. Again, just a few years ago, they had some high caliber talent. Zaria Chevre, who started at Tartan before finishing out at Simley. She went division one. And they had a few others. As we get another look at Tara Seifert. Who is hoping to make the most of her more hands-on approach. At Creighton Durham Hall. Perhaps the most surprising coaching change, considering what she built at Chaska, as we have a foul on Tartan. But as we stated earlier, this was something she wanted to do. No one forced her out. 
Fouls on target to number 35, Molly Murphy. It took some getting used to. Please, at this time, would you please make sure that your rides have been called and they are waiting for you at the conclusion of tonight's ball game. Not Thank unlike you. Faith Johnson Patterson years ago when she made the move from Minneapolis North to De La Salle, or Willie Taylor, who spent all those years at St. Paul Central, including the time when Angel Robinson was a student there before taking the job at Stillwater. Coaching at this level is nothing like the college or pro level. And by college, I'm talking D1. D2, D3 doesn't get the same kind of scrutiny as Hernandez got the steal, couldn't get the transition jumper on the other end, though. Green Durham Hall looking for another speedy Number take, eight, and they eight, complete eight, the eight, task. Eight, That's an Ira Gorman, 58-24, 5.50 to go. Based on what I've seen tonight, Tartan had some success early on. The trick for them, extending it, has Green Durham Hall, a little bit of shuffling down low. Stella Bauer also had to get around the official, ultimately could not finish the fast break play. Oh! Offensive foul called, or? Yes. And Gay hit with the elbow. Let's take a look. Slight contact there. Tough to tell from that vantage point how much there was. May have hit someone in the face, but ultimately it's Creighton Durham Hall ball. But again, the task for Tartan, the challenge. The objective, can they extend that glimpse we saw early in the game and carry it through longer stretches? If they can do that, who knows what the rest of this season will bring, but that could put them in position to reap some big benefits down the road. The shot clock did not activate. And it has been reset to 20. And I'm looking at the Tartan roster. There are no seniors on the team. So they do have a lot of building opportunities ahead of them. A few juniors, but no seniors. A persistent trip to the paint for Hover. Will net her a trip to the free throw line over getting a couple of offensive rebounds there. Green Durham Hall has a few seniors in their ranks, including Hodges and Haas. That went over Stillwater. One that signals what might come Creighton Durham Hall's way. They have not been. in contention, so to speak, among the short list of contenders as Hover splits at the line for some time. Three, bullseye. Number 15, Kronschnabel drops it from the wing. And we're past the mercy rule threshold now, so we'll be out of here in about four and a half minutes as Enge attacks the rim again. You hear about adjustments. Green Durham Hall Number making plenty of them. Gorman. Going full throttle on those fast break plays as Gorman demonstrated there. That's where Creighton Durham Hall has found tons of success in the second half. But you hear this all the time, no matter the sport. Adjustments, who can make the better adjustments? Who can Adapt and rise to the challenge. The Tartan. They get off on some fast starts, but then they stall. Evening that out and getting more consistency could bode well for them. And for Creighton Durham Hall, not an unexpected win. As Hernandez. 
Gets the friendly bounce on the elbow, Jay. That's her first field goal of the entire second half. It's 64-26. Tartan did pick up a few more points than they scored in their last meeting with Coon Rapids. And every team, every group, measures progress a little differently. That could be one of those signs for Tartan. Ultimately, Fouls on Creighton Dinner Halls, number 21, Joey Holder. They have their work cut out for them as far as getting back into the thick of it. Compared to some of the teams we saw a few years ago. But as an old marketing campaign would say as Molly Murphy gets the friendly bounce on the 15-foot jumper. Every saga has a beginning. And I, again, I'm not in the trenches as we are in stat padding time here. Offensive rebound and a second chance swish for Gigi Sylvester. Gets her on the board in this one. And that is her first points of the new season. Tartan will use their last timeout, and that will stop the clock with 2.05. And while I cannot speak to this from a coach and that perspective, if they go back, anyone from the Tartan side, listens to this, I would just say, you know, that first win, you gotta believe it's coming. Who knows when it might occur, could be the next game with St. Paul Central, Duluth East, it might be further down the road. You gotta tell yourself, we're gonna get that first win. Give yourself the confidence that you can do it. For Creighton Durham Hall, again, that win over Stillwater opens the door, in a sense, Stillwater, I mean, not quite the powerhouse they were a few years ago when they had the big three of Sarah Scaddy, Eliza Carlin, and Alexis Pratt, all three D1 athletes. Pratt finishing out her collegiate career in track. Sarah Scalia in her senior year at Indiana. Carlin in her senior year at Marquette, where Angel Robinson attended college all those years ago. But you look at their schedule. You, they're in 3A. They're in a favorable section. Como Park figures to be their biggest challenge, but looking at the two sides, Como, I think, has the tougher non-conference slate. However, Creighton Durham Hall, they don't have a ton of pushovers either. And two rivers on the rise, Visitation, trying to get a couple of their guards back from injury. De La Salle making it to state last year. And Minnehaha Academy, a 2A perennial. So they will face their share of tests. And while it's still early to make any definitive conclusions, uh, sometimes, as we've seen out of Minnesota with the women's basketball team, a coaching change is all you need to bring out the most in your players and highlight perhaps the hidden value that lied within. Again, Creighton Durham Hall doesn't have as strong of a basketball pipeline as your more traditional schools, as Hernandez basketball goes up to 11 Hernandez. with that jumper. Just over a minute left. But they have a lot of multi-sport athletes, a lot of versatility in their ranks. And sometimes Number things 11, don't quite work Gordon. out in one facet. The coaching change is all you need to discover what was inside you all along. Gorman scoring the last bucket for Creighton Durham Hall. She goes up to 10. And that's a new season high for her. Foul is called. And that will in all likelihood take us to the end of the game. With both teams in the bonus. This is amusing, three players with season highs tonight for Creighton Durham Hall and they all have 10. Hernandez will close this one out at the line. So Tartan did add a few more points 
compared to their last game. It's a shooting foul, so Hernandez has one more. They'll regroup and try again next Wednesday when they get St. Paul Central. In a section game for those two contenders. And one that Angel Robinson is hoping to emerge victorious with St. Paul Central being her alma mater. Hernandez will finish with 12 points, and Creighton Durham Hall will finish with back-to-back -back wins before their game with Forest Lake tomorrow. 68-31 the final. Creighton Durham Hall again, three players with season highs, Tank Edwards, Kyla Laguda, and Anira Gorman, all with 10, so that gives them something to aim for. I've never seen that, three season highs, and they all get 10. But it was a balanced effort all around for CDH tonight. Mia Hernandez finishes with 12 points for Tartan and Annabelle Enge with 11. As Tartan continues to put the building blocks in place under the new regime. As Creighton Durham Hall does the same on their end. With that, we'd like to thank all of you who spent part of your Thursday evening with us at the new Tartan gymnasium here in Oakdale. For the rest of our SEC crew, this is Mike Peden thanking you for watching live coverage of high school girls basketball. We'll see you next time.